people in local communities have been trying to clean up their rivers and protect the areas where people bathe by applying for designated bathing water statuses. But the campaign groups have been refused access to the reasons for the government rejecting the applications. The Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs, DEFRA, denied the Freedom of Information, FWA, requests, but the campaigners have petitioned against the decision. Only two of 21 applications have been granted over the past year, leaving many community groups wondering why their requests have been denied. Questions have arisen such as how many bathers are required to meet the threshold for the status, what local consultation is needed, what the score against the criteria is, and what public facilities might be necessary. The unanswered questions have left those in the fight against the pollution of their rivers feeling ignored and powerless. The campaigner Sheila Adam, who works with the Clean River Kent campaign, said, We don't know why we were unsuccessful, it might be numbers, but they have not told us what the numbers required are. We wanted to get this status so the environment agency would be required to test the water for bacteria and force a cleanup of the river. The river is a site of special scientific interest and has European conservation status, and we think it should make it a priority for investment. It's clear that the government needs to develop more transparent criteria and make them known to the public, so that local people can properly weigh their options before expending their volunteers' days working on applications that are doomed to failure. Becky Mulby, a Vilkley Clean River and a coordinator of the FWA requests, said that the lack of transparency was leading to a lot of wasted time and effort. The public will continue to waste days of volunteer time putting together bathing applications over months that then fail. Without knowing the assessment criteria and decision-making process, said Mulby, the public will continue to waste days of volunteer time putting together bathing applications over months that then fail. In the UK, the pollution or English rivers has become a huge issue, and Environment Secretary Therese Coffey's plan for tackling the water crisis has been met with criticism. There are measures included in the plan which have now been announced for a few years, and there is lack of a comprehensive approach to seriously handle the crisis. Every river in England has failed tests for chemical and biological pollution, and many communities want the government to invest in their rivers more, to give them better chances to reach good chemical and biological water statuses. Defra has refused to say how many bathers constitutes as a large number, but did say that they were taking into consideration how many people bathe in the area, if there are the necessary facilities and infrastructure, and if efforts are being taken to promote bathing in those waters. It's important that the government make sure that local communities are given more information on what criteria is necessary for a designated bathing water status and make reforms in the plan for water in England so that the devastating water crisis can be handled more effectively. The crisis of pollution, over-abstraction of water and drought in English rivers must be tackled, and the citizens in the local communities should have a bigger say in it.